Oh, hey, team. This is Ripper. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. World of Warships just released the new um, news, if you want to call it that, update 13.2. It's called the Pinata Hunt. So it's kind of a... Uh, I'm starting to something new now. I'm actually going to just review some of the updates that are keep coming out every month, and uh, I'll give you my take on it, and we'll kind of watch it together and see what the new update's going to entail. But uh, as always, uh, like, subscribe, all bundle love. You see value in the channel. And as always, thank you for your support. The 2000 subs are going to do a free premium DD giveaway. All right, so they, let's just watch the video that they released re just recently on YouTube and see how it goes. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about it at the, uh, at the end. We'll scroll down and see the article and what more it provides. Ahoy, Captains! World of Warships is proudly sailing towards Update 13.2. Watch this video to learn about Early Access to Commonwealth Cruisers, Commonwealth Team Event Pass, Pinata Hunt, and Submarine Changes. So let's kick off with some long-awaited additions to the text video to learn about Okay, so really the um, the the first thing I notice is, man, they, they stopped using Dasha and the other female actress, and I'm wondering why they're just bringing this guy in for some reason. So honestly, uh, majority of players are male, so um, you probably want to have uh, a little bit more uh, things that cater to your audience. Probably they, a lot of the male audience do look like looking at a female that is talking about warships and with a pretty face and so forth. So <laughs> just a yay critique right there. Although this guy is pretty, uh, you know, handsome-like, I'm not going to say, in the most heterosexual way possible, I'm just saying. Uh, but that caters to the female side, but also, you know, majority of players that I've noticed, that I've played with and seen and seen the comments are mostly uh, a little older gentlemen. So probably uh, want to think about that. So interesting there, interesting take there for uh, World of Warships. Off with some long-awaited additions to the tech tree, the Commonwealth Cruisers, which you can get in early access starting with 13.2. The new cruisers are notable for their firepower, with their decent damage per minute output giving them an advantage on the battlefield. On the other hand, their drawbacks include poor ballistics and slow traversing main guns. Okay, that, that's kind of funny right there. So uh, the gimmick is what? Uh, so these are cool cruisers from the Commonwealth, which I don't know. There's not many Commonwealth ships out there. And the, the only thing I could think of is Vampire to me and maybe a couple other things like a Perth or something. But... They're introducing these cruisers, which I'm not really sure what the gimmick is other than it's got firepower. Okay, every ship has firepower, but you're telling me it has poor ballistics. Let's start off with that. So it has poor ballistics. You never want to start off with creating a game design saying, hey, here's a game design. We're going to make it shoot poorly. And uh, has slow turret traverse speed. Okay, not very enticing right now. Starting from Tier 3, the Commonwealth cruisers wield torpedoes with ranges that increase quite a bit from Tier 7. When it comes to consumables, we're sure that you'll make good use of the signature crawling smoke generator available from Tier 5. Now, captains who like submarine hunting are going to love this. Tier 5 and... Okay, first of all, the crawling smoke thing, okay, whoop you cool, but this is a cruiser we're talking about here, not a... Uh, well, I mean, a lot of other, I would say, like Napoli and all them, they have the crawling smoke as well. I mean, I don't know if this gimmick really gives you anything unless they give you something else that allows you to make it even more powerful, maybe like a hydro, a six-kilometer hydro at least, or if you're going to have some kind of reload, high reload rate or some kind of, you know, boost of some kind. But crawling smoke in the world of, uh, you know, radar nowadays doesn't seem very fancy, uh, especially if you have nobody spotting. If you're crawling smoke, you're stuck in the smoke and uh, you're not pushing or anything. I don't know. These cruisers, since they're so lightly armored, slow traverse speed, four ballistics, not really sure, guys. Let's take a look. And higher ships have improved ASW features, and even better, they have access to the enhanced submarine surveillance. Okay, so basically they're introducing uh, radar, basically, for submarines. I mean... Why not give this to all ships uh, or majority of ships, especially the, the destroyers that are the ones hunting them down? I know back in the day, cruisers are actually continuously, uh, they do today, is cruisers actually use radar to hunt destroyers. So you're going to have to stop making cruisers literally try to do all these radar gimmicks and everything and just let, you know, majority of destroyers do it since that is their role. But again, I digress. It's consumable. Keeping with the theme, we're proud to present the Commonwealth Team Event Pass. As before, you'll be able to earn rewards as you advance along the progression lines by completing missions. The first progression line offers the Commonwealth Team Commemorative Flag, Historical Commander Harold Farkham, 
a permanent camouflage for Delhi, Commonwealth tokens, and more. Now, if you're a dedicated captain and you want more rewards, the second progression line is available for doubloons and offers Commonwealth Tier 6 Premium Cruiser Mysore, additional Commonwealth tokens, and four permanent camouflages. Regale, Canada Day, Indian Tricolor, and Blue Lagoon. After completing the progression lines, you can continue to earn rewards from extra levels. Two more signals containers per level for the first progression line, and some extra Commonwealth tokens for the second. You can spend Commonwealth tokens on new ships and thematic rewards in dedicated armory bundles. There's even more content in the Commonwealth Team Premium containers, such as Tier 9 Cruiser Encounter Commonwealth tokens, the New Zealand Fern Permanent Camouflage for Tier 8 Auckland, and the Australian Ornament Permanent Camouflage for Tier 10 Cerberus. Additional information about early access to the Commonwealth Cruisers is available in a dedicated article on our website. Now, let's move on to something a little quirky, our April Fool's event, the Pinata Hunt. This fun battle type pits two teams of seven players against each other with tier eight and nine ships of all types on the wacky colorful islands map. Both teams are tasked with hunting a pinata ship that, once sunk, will spawn a control point over its final resting place. The Pinata Hunt introduces a brand new game mechanic, Support Consumables, which you can use to help your team in various ways. You can only select one consumable with a single charge to take into each battle, but you can gain more consumable charges from interactive zones that spawn as the Pinata loses HP. You can unlock more Support Consumable options by completing special missions, or you can buy them for credits. There are going to be a couple of twists and special features. For example, everyone will get a zany makeover upon entering battle. Random thematic camouflages will be mounted automatically on your ships. Furthermore, all ships have a new unique explosion animation when destroyed, including the pinata ship. Participating in the event will bring you pinata tokens that you can spend on the pinata flag, the rabbit torpedo patch, and several other colorful event-themed permanent camouflages. This update delivers various... Okay, so that piñata event, and uh, we'll probably talk about it more when we scroll down, it, it just seems like another cash grab or something to add uh, to get more tokens. Another, again, another currency added to a world of currencies already. You're starting to see the theme here. Uh, more cash grabs, as you can see, and, and honestly, the piñata dent with consumables. Uh, not really sure about that one because they're trying to, I think they're trying to add more flavor to the game. Why Why can't they just keep it very simple? Like, just keep it to be shooting warship surface warfare and allow you to respawn. I mean, the pinata event, like, as soon as, yeah, the consumables are great, but if you die, boom, you can't use them. Uh, it pretty, pretty interesting there. So I, I'd rather think kind of like Call of Duty style. What brings people back to Battlefield and Call of Duty is the fact that you can respawn and start over and try to accomplish an objective as opposed to just blow up ships and it's over. And then you got to just go back to port and start over. So that's my thought on that. Promised changes to submarine gameplay. Most importantly, we've addressed the issue of submarines making extremely short range shotgun attacks by reducing submarine torpedo damage to 10% of the total when they strike a target within 2.9 kilometers. Between 2.9 and 3.0 kilometers, the torpedoes will quickly regain their full damage. Aside from that, instead of relying on hydrophone, you can now freely use the N key to reveal terrain while submerged. You can expect even more enhancements. For example, the submarine proximity alerts are getting audio and additional visual effects to alert you when a submerged submarine is nearby. On top of that, the ping indicator will now show the approximate direction of travel of any submarine at the moment it emits a sonar ping. We've also made significant changes to submarine upgrades, but for more on that, check out our dedicated article on our website. Oh, and one last thing. The US aircraft carriers are leaving early access, so you'll find them in the tech tree. What are you looking forward to most in update 13.2? Write your answers down in the- Okay, so that, that's basically the, the, the biggest thing right now is they're talking about submarine warfare. So this biggest one right here is the, okay, they've addressed that there is a problem with the game. The fact that they're even doing a video and an update about this tells you that this is a problem for the game. Uh, I know a lot of people out there just don't like hearing about that. Hey, just play the game, get better at it, whatever. But yeah, I I would say that, but this is a different 
I mean, think about it. This is World of Warships, surface warfare. But the majority of the videos that I'm seeing and the gameplay I'm seeing is airplanes and submarines. Where is the surface warfare of that? It, I mean, think about it. Aircraft carriers come in. You put a, uh, a an aiming reticle on a t an object floating on the water, and then you click a mouse button and blow it up. That doesn't seem like very much surface warfare. It just seems like now let's play World of Airplanes or Flight Simulator or a bombing run or an A-10 run. I mean, whatever. You're playing a flight simulator at this point. Uh, this is World of Warships, which is focused on surface warfare, which is what it's stuck at. Just like tower defense is not air defense, you know. Uh, same goes for the submarine aspect of it. This is surface warfare. Why are you introducing a ship if the sub unless the submarine just stays on the surface? Th that would be fun, but you're talking about a submarine that's doing this ability right here that you're seeing going underwater, periscope depth, not unable to be detected or unable to be shot at, which is like almost a permanent smoke screen that you can't even shoot at. I mean, think about it. A destroyer at least has a smoke screen, but you at least you can blind fire into it, torp it, do whatever you can. At least you have the ability to return fire. In the submarine world, this is like having a UFO literally fly over your ship, uh, beam it up, Scotty, and then blow it up, and whatever. You can't do anything about it. That's the same aspect of this submarine aspect. Again, I digress. But again, the fact that they're even addressing this shotgunning aspect tells me that it is a problem in the game. And 2.9 kilometers, okay. That means I, as a destroyer player, I have to drive over and still inflict 10% damage, but I'm still spotted the whole time if they're going to do something of surface or do anything like that, or if I'm trying to engage. Um, now, if he goes underwater, I'll have depth charges that have to be literally almost over top of him. And the other aspect is three kilometers away. I mean, how much time does that really offer? How long are the range of these torpedoes, and what is the reload rate? A, a submarine can reload literally within, I've seen the lowest maybe is 40-something seconds, 38 maybe. Um, as soon as you're firing torpedoes, he's already reloading before my damage con can even come off, uh, cool down sometimes. And then he's also shooting a shotgun from three kilometers. So... To me, shotgunning three kilometers away is still shotgunning, shotgunning three kilometers away. The fact that he even addressed this says it is still a uh, an option in the game. So, again, don't know if this is really going to improve. It is a step in some kind of a direction. I don't know if it's the right one because you still got the submarine in the game. Honestly, the solution is take submarines out of randoms, take submarines out of whatever, make them their own gameplay. If you want to go play submarines, call it like anti-submarine warfare, ASW. Make it a BM if the, and let the players that want to play against submarines play against submarines. Oh, but wait a second. That would kill your entire uh, platform, wouldn't it? So... I'm sorry to be negative about it, but it, this is killing the game. Honestly, you've seen the, the other Flamu and Sea Lord, Matt and Bat and Flambat. They show the stats of how the game, the players are leaving in war game. You're trying to get these quick pump and dump kind of guys get in and dump their money and then leave again. Not healthy for the game. You're becoming more of a casino at this point. Uh, Pinata Hunt, we've already talked about, kind of just a gimmick to get people to play. I don't know if new players really care about stuff like this. I mean, yay, looks pretty cool, ships and everything. Uh, and then what, what is it really you're trying to do? You're trying to blow up to try out new consumables. Okay. And then nice, nice cinematic cool ex uh, blow up explosions. Yay. I mean, I don't know if people really play it, the game for this uh, kind of uh, reality or events. Uh, it's another gimmick just to get you to, ooh, wow, nice video visual effects. Make the explosions better and realistic. That's what people come for, I believe. But nobody bought this game to watch dolphins changing the different, t uh, what is it, sticky notes that are all over them? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, you're going to be invulnerable, I think, at this point while you're in. And then you drop a cap point, and everybody's trying to shoot you. You get in the cap point, you get a consumable. Yay, whoop de do. I think, again, this is an introductory to the new c uh, consumables they're trying to do, like where, hey, I'm invulnerable for 30 seconds. Okay, now we're starting to get un get not realistic here. Look, if you're going to make them invulnerable, then just make all the ships respawn. Once you die, you start back in a corner, you come back into the fight, accomplish an objective. I mean, obviously, you're making objectives here where you're making a cinder circle and, uh, you know, cl smoke screens and so forth. It, again, make it like Battlefield and Call of Duty. If you're going to do objective-based style gameplay, then have g guys respawn, come back in, so they're not running to the back of the map. They're not hiding all the time. They're not fearful of losing their ship, not even playing the game. Uh, I think the fear of just losing... Uh, your death altogether just incorporates dying. I mean, that may work in first-person shooter games where, yeah, we're trying to see who can uh, die the quickest and uh, by eliminating uh, respawns and whoever's the last man standing wins, and that's that works for that type of gameplay, but not a slow-paced World of Warship strategy game. So my thoughts on that. 
early access to Commonwealth cruisers. So we've already talked about, they've already showed you what the new things are coming out. Look, okay, look, both light and heavy cruisers are equipped with 152 millimeter guns. Yay, more light cruisers, the Citadel and blow up. Not, I don't see many guys picking kind of these cruisers in gameplay. Uh, they may pick one or two, but maybe like a, a, the, the higher tier ships that are stronger and have more gimmicks. Uh, 203 millimeter armor. Okay, here's the biggest one. They can dish out damage, decent damage per minute. Decent. What does decent mean? Drawbacks include really poor ballistics. So decent damage per minute, but they can't hit anything. Slow, poor ballistics, and then slow traversing turrets. So I can't even turn the turrets in order to get them to shoot what I want. These armed with torpedoes, cruiser torpedoes. Nah, I don't know. Not many. Unless you make them long range torpedoes, I don't see the use of these. Yeah, they become long range. You can launch and stealth due to cruiser excellent concealment. Okay, so good concealment. That that might be the savior there. Standard hydroacoustic search. You're gonna have to make this a cruiser search longer range than just five. You got to go up to six or seven and make it worth it because otherwise you're gonna be too far away from the battle to do anything. Crawling smoke we talked about, and then permanent camouflages. Yeah. So these are the, these are the ships right here. Here's what it looks like. The Delhi it looks pretty good. Support India. Way to go. Awesome. New Zealand. Awesome. Great camo there. And Australia. So we're getting uh, people from the uh, other side of the hemisphere. Pretty awesome. And you get some nice captains, cool. Uh, more, more Commonwealth stuff. Yeah, again, I think it's more of a more tokens for cash grab kind of events. Okay, whoop de do. Uh, the way the inflation has gone, I'm not really sure if these really add value, uh, other than just a kind of a gimmick to get you to play. There's nothing else they can do to add to the game because it's a free to play game, right? Unless they want you to spend money in these events. Commonwealth event pass. We already talked about this. More of this uh, cash. These keep getting weaker and weaker. I'm sound they're not really giving me any kind of economic flags as much. Things that I can't really use. Uh, more tokens and more camo. Camos don't really help me as much anymore. So, the biggest one of the submarine. We already talked about my 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 disgrace and not disgrace. My grievance against this is the submarines. Honestly, again, they've they, the fact that they're even doing this, telling you that they're addressing that there is a problem with the game. There is a shotgunning. Uh, you're gonna, all you're doing is maybe making it uh, weaker in the sense of they have to go a little further. Instead of like two kilometer shotgunning, you're gonna do three kilometer shotgunning. What's the big difference? It still hurts. I mean, I've been shotgunned from like four or five kilometers off from a battleship. So what? I mean, it still happens. And the torpedoes do, I mean, they can literally launch eight torpedoes right at you. And all I can do, and especially since the homing torpedoes, I can't damage con because the damage con is twice as long as the reload sometimes. I mean, I'm, I'm not putting out fires. I'm putting out... They should make it literally a separate um, damage con for the shotgun, the, the submarines, or just take submarines out altogether. This is ridiculous. I mean, if destroyers can't ping you, then why should uh, submarines be able to ping you? I don't get it, because you know why? Submarines, they would find out that submarines wouldn't be able to hit anything unless they go up and shotgun people uh, at long distances. I mean, it's really difficult for a submarine to hit somebody out 10, 15 kilometers, right? Well, guess what? Destroyers do it all the time. I digress on that topic. Uh, submarines will receive changes. Uh, gameplay and principle back submarines and surface ships. Balance changes applied to submarines. Okay, we'll see what happens there. Aircraft carriers are going away. Get it if you want it. Independence, Yorktown, Essex. Essex, I think, was in a gimmick event, I think, right? Rank battle starting again. It's going to be uh, bronze, silver. Bronze is six versus six. It's tier eight. And the silver and gold leagues players will be a tier 10. You know, honestly, it's been such a terrible grind to get to gold. And in gold, you're not really playing many other different players. I usually just stay at silver. Let me know your thoughts about that. I kind of just, after getting after bronze, I just go to silver and play tier nine, tier 10. And honestly, it's been enjoyable. I don't, I'm not stressed out about trying to get to the next league. I get enough steel. And honestly, it's just fun. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you like silver or do you really like gold? Honestly, I prefer like silver because that's where I see the most variety of players and gameplay, and I actually enjoy it. I'm not stressed out. I get my steel, my steel, and then I move on. It's just very, just a, a kind of a pleasant style, kind of like randoms. Here's the problem, though. I think they, um, they're allowing. What is it? Uh, okay, for bronze and silver, no more than one submarine. Here's the gimmick. Here's the problem right here. You have a submarine. You have a submarine of six versus six. Think about that for a second. One of the players is literally a submersible that doesn't it doesn't cap really. That's not his role. Uh, he doesn't spot. He's underwater all the time, and he's just out route route just hunting battleships in the spawn. Not very conducive for fun gameplay, right? Four battleships, great. They're bringing back more battleships. I thought this was what the game was supposed to be about. I get to pick a bunch of battleships. We get to all go into battle together and just blow each other to smithereens. That's why I like brawls. 
I like um, the um, was it airship events where you allow more and more battleships. Those are fun because asymmetric battles is fun because you're doing a lot of surface warfare. My goodness, why can't they get that through their head? This is a surface warfare game. Four destroyers is a standard, and then the Gold League, no more than one submarine, three battleships, four destroyers. Okay, great. No carriers, it seems like. That's a good thing. Again, in a surface warfare game, why are you uh, bringing in six versus six with carriers? I don't understand. That was the last season, I believe. They finally figured out that doesn't is not very conducive to gameplay. They took out the carry and just allowed a submarine. All right, brawls. We'll be, uh, we already talked about that. There's the membership. They give you. Ooh, and this is another cool thing. If you guys don't know in clan battles, this is really awesome. I every time I kind of do a um, merking or like where you're basically just a ship for hire in uh, in clan battles. Go look that up. But basically, you're just playing for a a, a clan. If you're in a different clan, you can play for another clan. And the cool thing is they actually are going to add the Discord link. So rather than keep asking for them and copying, pasting, and do all these things, just click on the link and boom, you add your Discord link right onto your Discord server. That's really awesome. I think that's a very uh, good workaround for the, um, the uh, workflow. Balance changes. You can look at it right here. Not much right there other than submarines and tones. What is this? Alternative range increased from 7.5. Wow. Center increasing range. Content changes, future changes, release update. We'll, uh, Battle of Psalm collection. Battle okay. Battle of Psalms coming back. Or they're adding the uh, container, so you can get the Battle of Psalm stuff. There was a destroyer in there. I was trying to get. I think I I missed that opportunity. Other changes. Uh, let's see here. Just these are just like kind of just clean up house things. Uh, nothing too serious. But here I'll leave it on the screen for you to take a look at. And ooh, I get to claim a gift. Yay, I get a gift. Anyways, um, that's the um, summary of the uh, new update for 13.2 coming up soon. Let me know your thoughts below, what you think about it, what your uh, my gripes. Hey, let me know if my gripes are not a concern or if it's uh, just something I'm just that's not really a thought about the community. I'm always down to ask about it. But the thing, the biggest change here is they are addressing the shotgunning effect of the submarine issue. Um, they're doing a pinata event, more cash grab stuff, tokens have more currencies, and that's the biggest thing. Uh, battleships, I'm sorry, uh, carriers going away, the U.S. carrier access, early access is leaving, more balance changes and interface improvements, brawls has come back, ranks is coming back, new events. So that's the gist of the 13.2. Let me know in your thoughts below what you think. As always, I appreciate you, you watching. Uh, let me know what we can do to get better, as always. As if I said something wrong, let me know, and it lets the community know better as well. But as always, thank you guys for the support. I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you guys on the high seas. Make sure you say hi out there. Take care. Cheers.